you can see. And as I was working on this set, I thought to myself, wow, I should go live because this is almost perfect. I'm not going to have to uh, do much shaping. I'm talking low because my son is still asleep. So I'll go ahead and add clear on this now. It's all about getting that foundation laid. Apex is not too high. Hope your morning is going well. Just using some clear. The key to good shaping is wiping your brush too. You have to wipe that excess off. So this is kind of slow uh, curing. Once you lay that dot, Kind of leave it there for a second, especially if you're monomer is a slow curing. Gravity is your friend, remember that. Kind of guide that acrylic. Remember with a real hand, you don't want to wipe the cuticle too much with the monomer and the brush. And I'm just touching ever so lightly so I don't put a lot of dips in the acrylic. I have a lot of time with this to shape. about doing either bubble gum or a Barbie look. You want to blend those two beads together. Touch them very lightly. This free game right here. Just touch it very lightly. It's almost cured, but it's not fully cured. We just wipe them very lightly to fill in some of those dips. Wipe on the sides. Wipe on the brush on your napkin. some color blocking and I didn't cut it um, because I didn't have a tool next to me to cut it so I just did it uh, but I can clean that up with some drawing some lines as well the color blocking and I'll kind of leave it there for a second especially if it's uh, slow curing with the sides and as I wipe the sides I'm tapping my brush on my napkin because you don't want that to cure inside of your brush. Okay. You can start to blend backwards into the last bead that you laid. And I always like to work down the nail. I don't know if people consider this down and up and up and down. I say down the nail because towards me it's down. Towards the client it's up the nail. So I'm touching ever so lightly. Lay the next bead. Get that excess off. And you can wipe backwards. Very lightly. 
because if you wipe all of it off, you're going to find yourself wiping your brush more often. And what's going to happen is you wipe all of this off and you wipe it on here. You're wasting acrylic for one, but then your work is going to be lumpy. I figured this out this morning. <laughs> so practice, practice, practice nail techs. Nailistas, practice is key. I'm going to go and grab something really quick, so I'll be right back. In the meantime, focus on that and watch it cure. So I have a little dip, I don't know if y'all can see that, but I have a little dip right there. Y'all see that little dip? I'm going to fill that. Give me one more second. Some more friends in here. I'm gonna fill this little dip right here, this little, I'm gonna take a really small bead. Um, bead ratio, it depends on how wet or dry your brush is and how big of a bead you grab. Um, see another little dip right there. And then the excess I'm gonna place right there. Let's scoot this over just a tad bit more. And like I said, this is slow curing uh, monomer. This is a system. It's by Elite Beauty, I'm using their monomer and their crystal clear. So, you just blend that bead into the rest. Uh, this is going to cut down fouling time so much. Okay. Now, depending on how thick or thin the client wants their their tips, the very free edge of the nail. Some of some people like them thick. Some people like them thin. In this case, this client likes them thick. I'm good at doing them thin. So we're just going to pop that bead there. Once again, this is slow curing. So I'm going to leave that bead alone for a little bit. Kind of wiping the sides because it's going to run. She wants them thick. Okay, so I'm leaving that bead right there. See that? And I can put the nail up to have gravity kind of pull it down. Or in the meantime, I can grab another bead and let it sit for a second. I have a lot of time with this acrylic and monomer system to uh, shape and do different things. So this is called Lee Beauty. You can get it off of Amazon. I'll start touching this one a little too early. Okay. So you just blend backwards from the free edge. Make sure you're guiding that acrylic. And you just kind of pat to get it out of whack. Patting really lightly. See, in a lot of the videos that I watched on shaping, they speed it up for time's sake because they feel like they're going to lose people's tension spans. But I'm doing it in real time because number one, I'm live on Facebook. Number two, it doesn't help to see it sped up. It looks more aggressive. So you're seeing in real time the misshapings and how I fix it and how lightly I'm patting my brush on the nail. Very light, very light. 
this is why it can take two hours, especially on some long nails like these, to do ten fingers like this, to take your time shaping. In the end, the end result is going to look better than somebody that rushed on a nail and then tried to foul it, and then they're rushing on their fouling. Shaping, you cannot, you just cannot skip on it. Um, I'm starting to see in people's pictures when I look at nails, any lumps or bumps so that's that lets me know that my eye has gotten better I started laying acrylic and I correct myself I started in January actually I found a, a picture of where I had did my first layover on my own nails and that was in January so forgive me in another video I said I started in February I started in January and that was just some store-bought cheap Acrylic and monomer system by Kiss. I, I tried to use that little cheap stuff and it did not work like the real stuff. So, I mean, it, it'll hold up. The first time I did it, it peeled right off my nails, which was like in 2017. Um, the second time, it stayed a little longer, it stayed, it lasted a couple days, and then it still peeled off. So, it just the stuff popped off my nail, but back then I didn't know I had to prep my nails, so I didn't prep. Um, and then when I found out I had to prep my nails, which was probably about February, it stayed that kiss stuff stayed a little longer. But I wouldn't suggest using that stuff, it's, it's just cheap. That uh, kiss monomer kit that you can get from the dollar store or Walmart, that stuff is just cheap. If you're going to do your own nails at home, I suggest getting you a poly gel kit or getting you some gel polish because it'll last longer. Okay, so this is still curing. I'm just pressing down this lump, taking the belly of my brush and pressing. Still, we're doing it ever so lightly. Okay, this is going to cut down. I really don't even have to foul these nails, but I am just because I'm a perfectionist. If you see any clouds, that's from the um, colored acrylic underneath. Uh, but yeah, I'm still going to foul these once they cure. Okay, so we are pretty much done with that nail. I mean, if you're a perfectionist like me, you can go in and lay another little dot to fix this lump because this is going to cut down your fouling time and it's easier to I must say with the pre-shaped nails and by pre-shaped I mean that you don't really have to foul them these are only thing I did was cut the tips off these tips are like this hand I did yesterday this hot Cheetos extra hot Cheetos I just clicked them down just clip the tip off those turned out really good and I used acrylic paint I'll make another video later on explaining everything that I used on these nails <clears throat> I was feeling real artsy yesterday so that and I wanted some hot Cheetos and I can't eat them because they cause stomach issues and I already have stomach issues so I just put them on some nails So everybody do the pizza, the hot dog, the hamburger, whatever on the nails, cotton candy, suckers. I wanted to be different. I wanted to put some chips. <laughs> I should do some lays. Okay. So this nail, I was just trying to be artsy and try something different, make it look like drips of paint. We're going to encapsulate this with this clear. You can start at the free edge and work your way backwards, or you can start at the cuticle and work your way down the nail. Remember, gravity is your friend. Kind of ate that acrylic. And see, I got the cuticle flooded. No biggie. Just tapping ever so lightly and guiding that acrylic where I need it. Wiping that brush, tapping ever so lightly. Now the acrylic is going to feel where there is nothing. It's going to run. In some instances, I like fast curing acrylic, and in other instances, I like slow cur curing. In this case, I like that the fact that it's slow curing, so I have enough time to. Feel and move where I need it to move. 
and make sure you get that acrylic 1 16th of an inch so it's not necessarily on the cuticle but 1 16th away from the cuticle you don't want the client to look like they already need a fill either and i see some people's work and it looks like that person needs a fill it's like you just did that okay you should have went back in with another bead of acrylic and your client is going to be mad too. Um, I noticed that was a trick that the shop shops used to do to me. So I would come back sooner and get a, a fill. They wouldn't put it as close to the the cuticle. And I would say something like, hey, y'all know what y'all doing. I'm going to need a fill sooner because you didn't put it where it's supposed to go. So just be mindful of that. If you do go to them and get your nails done. You're trying to pull all the little tricks to get their money. And I ain't hating. It's just, hey, I'm a consumer before anything. So if you do good work, you won't have to trick people into coming to get their nails done. They're going to come to you. All right. This is something that just, you kind of have to just practice. It really can't be taught. Um, I've had a, a lot of instruction on how to do it. I've watched a lot of videos, but it's nothing like being hands-on. This is one of those things that you just have to trial and error. And you got to know your acrylic. See, I've used this acrylic a lot. It's almost gone. <clears throat> so I got used to it. And I noticed that I can't move it right away. This acrylic, this brand, it's better if you pat it. Kind of ate it down the nail and pat. So. This one's probably going to need to be fouled because I did the dimensions underneath. But wiping that brush is so important, you guys and gals. Especially if you want to keep your brush for a while. So I'm laying a bead there. I'm going to go ahead and grab another bead. I'm using a size 10 brush, Kalinsky hair. And I just got this one from the nail supply store back when I was in school. And I really like it. I use this brush more than I use any other brush. Okay, so that bead, I'm going to go ahead and pat it. I'm just trying to cure that lump. Probably should use a different apple because this one is see better days. It's folded for now. I can wipe my brush. And we're gonna pat using the belly of the brush, kind of just pat it. Now with strokes. using a medium bead, it's not too wet, not too dry. The wetter the bead, that seems like the longer the curing time for that bead. So, using medium beads, and it still is a longer curing time than other acrylics I've worked with. I'm just blending this ever so lightly. If you don't think that anything is on the brush, it's just wise to wipe it. You can clean the brushes with like some uh, vinegar, acetone mixture. Um, that helps. Or you can let it soak in monomer. That helps. But avoiding getting acrylic stuck in your brush is the main effective way to keep your brush clean. Having a clean, effective, good brush is key to shaping as well so there's a lot of different factors that go into there are a lot of different factors that goes into uh shaping just lightly touching that i'm gonna have to foul that down 
drop of I did that on purpose to make it look like a drip. I did all this with colored acrylic, so. Free edge, I like to place it this way. See how long I can sit here without touching it? And I can just guide it lightly. That way it's not moving around too much, but it's moving enough. Okay? Bead is perfect. Now, nails like this, I would like a four, size 14 brush. I do not own one, but <clears throat> I would definitely invest in one. Um, just because you can grab big, even bigger beads than what I'm grabbing, and personal preference. Some people like working with size 8s. It just depends on what you feel comfortable working with. What do you do your best work with? Um, working fast doesn't always mean that you know, you're know you good at what you do, so I wouldn't focus on how fast you work. I mean, of course you don't want to take all day on a set of nails, but still. I'm going to push this forward. I kind of like the sides. Just brushing backwards to blend that bead. And pat forward. And I haven't had to dip my brush in acetone in any of that. So this acrylic is really good. I would suggest uh, practicing with this. It's called Lee Beauty. It's on Amazon. You can get the monomer and the acrylic. Uh, a lot of people say it's best to work with the system. I don't, um, but you kind of get wonky results if you don't. So. If you buy a monomer or a acrylic powder or polymer, it's best to just get that system. You'll get the best results with that system. I'm just filling some little gaps that I missed. Taking small, considerably wet beads and, well, medium beads still. They're not too wet, they're not too dry. I'm just pay, placing it there. Tapping lightly, and blending those beads. That's where you get a lot of lumpiness. If you do not blend your last bead with the current bead, you're going to get lumpiness, unevenness. And it's going to be a lot of fouling. And you won't be happy doing all that fouling. If you're like me and you dread fouling, work on shaping. And just keep practicing filing and shaping and but just work on laying your acrylic better too so you won't think that filing nails are dreadful it's really not once you get the hang of it that's the good news two PSA I do not work on top of other people's work so say you like my designs and you want me to come and or you want me to uh, design some nails that you already have on, I will not do that. Sorry, will not do it. Tried it once, failed miserably. For one, I don't know what kind of uh, acrylic has been laid before me. I don't know if it's MMA, I don't know. So it's just best to go and get the full service done by me. That way I can ensure the best quality of my work. Um, but yeah, I don't work on other people's work, so I refuse to do artwork on somebody else's work. I refuse to do an overlay on somebody else's work. None of that. You have to come to me with natural nails. And yeah, let me do my thing because I have hours towards this and a lot of them, so... 
just fill in because there's this lump right here so I'm just filling it to make it look fresh with that just wiping my brush I'm trying to wait for this to cure blowing on it too may help but I wouldn't suggest doing that especially during these times with the client but this is very slow curing so this is a great one to work with if you are a beginner and even if you're not you just like slow curing nails okay that is that nail y'all can see that looks really good I probably won't even have to hardly foul okay so that is shaping in a nutshell um, I just wanted to come on here and show you guys I will take pictures of the final look thanks for watching make sure you hit thumbs up on this video and share and invite other people if you know that if you have a friend out there that you know is new to nails or anything like that or if you know somebody that like getting their nails done and like looking at different designs, you might get inspired by a look that I do. Don't mind at all. So um, if you take that to your nail tech and say, hey, I want this done, you know, I wouldn't mind that at all. Just give me the credit. Tag me in your picture and be like, hey, I took this nail design and had this person do it. I would love to see my work done on somebody's hands. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you all have a happy, safe, and blessed Monday. Till later.